hindi ko na kayo nakikita. This is a problem with ano, dapat dalawa yung laptop para makita. So, let's just hope there will be blessings to come para dalawang laptop ang magamit ko. So, anyway. So, for the discrete probability distributions in the introduction that we had last time, this is supposed to consist of the uniform discrete probability distribution, the binomial, the geometric, the hypergeometric, the negative geometric probability distribution, and the Poisson probability distribution. Why we did not include the geometric and the negative uh, geometric is because these are uh, version, special edition of the binomial probability distribution. Okay, for the uniform discrete probability distribution is because I forgot to include that in this slide, is, is easily understood by considering phenomenon that provides us with equally likely events such as rolling a dice. A dice is a cube with specific uh, dots baga doon sa its side. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six dots because a cube has six sides. So if we say that all of the sides can equally likely result from any roll of a dice, then we say that each event will have one over six because there are six events. So equally likely means you just divide the entire uh, probability of one by six. So uniform ga because it's equally likely. Pararehas yung probability. Or let's say if we have 35 uh, students in this class and if the probability of uh, calling anyone to recite for graded recitation, if there is no bias no, from the teacher, then we say that all of you can equally likely be called to recitation. And therefore, because there are 35 of you, the probability of being called to recite will be 1 over 35. So that's a uniform discrete probability distribution. Okay. Now we come to the binomial probability distribution. Dito sa klase natin, once you're given any formula, don't ever be afraid of that formula. Kasi sabi nga dun sa synthesis ng happiness the science of happiness is when you're faced with something that you don't like to to make a choice of just you know synthesize your your perception of things and in that forced choice declare that that is truly what you really wanted just like what your classmate said, that the choice between nursing and biology was not really a choice, but that she wanted nursing. But because she was given the choice to be, I mean, she was stuck with the choice of um, being in yes, biology, um, you know? Yes, Po? Um, yung PPT po, in the first slide. Lang. Yung ano po? Yung PPT po, na stuck sa first slide. Wait, an anong ibig mong sabihin? Wala, walang ano, walang slide? Ayun na po. Ayun okay na, na po. Ano po? Kanina po kasi nasa uh, title page, ano, title slide lang po. Pero ngayon, uh, nasa binomial probability distribution na po. Bakit kaya to? Kanina din yung first class, wala na yung last. Oh. Let's just be patient. Something is really wrong with uh, Jimmy. At saka yung sa classroom nyo kasi, di ba, I actually gave the lab too. When I give the, ano kasi, classwork, like for biology sections, lahat na yan binibigay ko and it's scheduled to be released. And yesterday also, they were telling me, wala naman po kaming PowerPoint na sinasabi mo, which was given out. And I said, I gave it very early in the morning. Most times I don't sleep dahil nga dito sa mga requirements na paggawa ng recorded lessons and etc. So this is a problem and we're experiencing this now. So let me just uh, explore the possibility of the LMS 
service of Bicol University, although dapat nandoon ako sa BUCS to use the LMS, which is a difficulty because where we are at the CSB4, yung faculty room namin, wala naman doon na internet. Kung meron naman yung sa DC, DICT, which case it is weak or it cuts off. So let's just be, you know, be patient. Yes, po. Okay. So you are able to view the slide on the binomial probability distribution. Eto, what I said before, wag kayong matakot on any formula as we have learned from the from the video of uh, synthetic happiness. So eto, this symbol n taken k is a com combinatorial computation. This will be easily computed from a scientific calculator and from your Excel function. So don't be afraid of this. So what we need to understand is that in this formula, this p is the probability of success. This exponent k in here is the number of successes that we are interested. And the 1 minus p is the probability of failure. And the n minus k will be the number of failures, which means failure is to be understood the absence of the attribute. And success is the presence of the attribute. I said success and failure for this probability distribution has quotes because it can flip flop on the declaration in the probability computation because it is dependent on what probability you are computing for. If it's the attribute of interest, no, then we always call it success. Okay, even when it will be the reverse characteristic that we are uh, interested in. So for this probability distribution, we always will have to fix that there are only two possible events. Okay, and as an example, if let's say you are computing for the phenomenon of the next day weather forecast is incorrect the next day, then we can look at the batting average of the weatherman, resident forecaster of Pagasa Region 5. And then we can compute on the probability of a correct um, forecast for the next day. Okay, Because the forecaster can either, either be correct or incorrect in his forecast. So there are two events allowed. Okay, so for the succeeding slide, nakikita niyo po? Did the slide change? Um, no po, ma'am. Nasa binomial probability distribution po. Ngayon, nag-change na po? Yes po, ma'am. Okay na po. Yes po, ma'am. Ibig sabihin, every time i change ako, or dito na lang, ganito na lang, hindi full screen, baka ganito, it will work, okay. So, when we look at this example, no, if we have a early forecast for the Foundation Day celebration of September 21, 2020, if we would have wanted to compute for the probability for the last three hours of the event where uh, students and all other members of the BU community will proceed to the athletic grounds where we will be exposed to the elements, then we can compute for that knowing that the probability of a chance of rain for any R of the seven hours for that uh, celebration, then that can be now a binomial probability distribution or for the next probability, which will be that we will not experience rain. So dito, this kind of uh, probability computation will now define success as the probability of no rain. So if the probability of 
a chance of rain is 15%, the P in the <clears throat> formula will now become 1 minus 0 0.15, which will be 85%. Okay? So that is the flip-flopping that happens with the binomial distribution. We will have relevant examples for this for our lab three exercise. Ah, uh, no, it will be lab four exercise because your lab three will be the graphical rendition of the data. That's why I need the summarized data from your class prior to next meeting, okay? So, next, we have the hypergeometric probability distribution. You get to see the change in slide na po? Yes, po, ma'am. Um, okay. So, ibig sabihin, hindi nag -e effect yung full screen. So, let's look at the hypergeometric probability distribution. This hypergeometric probability distribution can be understood when we when we deal with phenomenon where when we have one set a subset of that big set has the characteristic of interest and from this subset we are going to draw out the specific number of successes so this is an intelligent method of understanding a a probabilistic solution to a problem na instead of lumping everything together as we would in a binomial setting we would have to segregate a subset and then allow ourselves to focus on the subset for the specific resolution of that probabilistic situation so for the formula oh let me just first give you an example <clears throat> Suppose in this class, diba, nung, when you generated your data for the seven-day uh, duration, if I'm interested on a sex-linked um, sex characteristic of, let's say, um, What's a biological characteristic na linked to ano? Let's say um, hemophilia, di ba? So, more nagba manifest. Man this hemophilia is simply manifested by the males, although the carrier will be the female. So, kung gusto kong mag ano, mag separate ng, ng subset para certain ako that these are those who are. Who will manifest hemophilia? No? So, is a separate ko yung males. If we bring that to a laboratory setting, if you're looking at uh, mice, no? Experimental mice. So, kung mako compute ako ng possibility of male mice having hemophilia, understanding that I was given the probability that any single male mice will have hemophilia and my experiment is on wound healing, then it's critical that I understand the probability or the possibility of male mice included in my sample set having hemophilia. Kasi mahirap yun. It will really mess up your <clears throat> your uh, your results. Unless you would like to go through exclusion and inclusion criteria. Ibig sabihin, tinitest mo muna kung may hemophilia yung bawat male mice that will be part of the experiment. So, what this does is if you have a population of N, N size you segregate a subset of S from the population because from the subset of big S, you take small S successes from the sample. So we are looking at the combination 
from the subset with the attribute of interest and taking from that subset S successes. And then the non the non characteristic evident on this the bigger subset or the other subset will now only have n minus s units and we're taking from there the this should be this one is an error okay i just took this from a from a you you get the source of this formula the big n n in here should be small n okay and then divided by combination of big n taken small n so there is an error in that formula so to illustrate this easily let's use the, the uh, poker poker uh, cards okay but before we do that Let's look at the characteristics of this hypergeometric probability distribution. We are sampling from two groups, one with the attribute we are interested in, the other group will have the absence of the attribute of interest. Our task is to focus on the subset or the group with the attribute and that we're sampling without replacement. Okay, and when we take out one sample unit from the subset of interest, all the succeeding probabilities of that subset, I mean the probability of taking one sample unit from that subset is now in the, is now dependent of the prior drawing from the subset so hindi gaya to ng binomial na each each event of taking from the set will be independent dito sa hypergeometric the succeeding probabilities of taking one sample unit from the subset is dependent on the prior drawing okay yung pagkuha ng um, study unit okay for the conventions for the hypergeometric distribution we state that as a random problem a random variable x is distributed as a hypergeometric distribution with the uh, characteristics of r b and n where r is the sample size of the group of interest for the example that i made will be the males from the from the experimental mice the b will be the size of the second group that means the population of the mice minus the males and n will be the sample size of interest which means that n will come from the r of the group of interest so why when we have this characterization of the random variable as hypergeometric then it's easily done when we compute for the mean which simply is n times p and then variance will be this okay and then we now can derive the standard deviation from the square root of the variance because in any probabilistic computation when we make a summary statement of the of the random variable and its behavior we simply can focus on the mean and the standard deviation okay. so for a sample illustration of the hypergeometric probability distribution we make use of the poker cards yung walang kaalam-alam dito sa poker cards na to di ba yung pusoy uh, tong its tong its di ba poker cards din ang ginagamit na to sure tama ba hello po Si sino ang alam ng tong its 
anybody hello po ma'am parang sa regular na baraha lang po yung tong it's po i guess pero po, di, ma'am di ba pero 52 cards din yun di ba tama ba yes po ma'am okay, yes so, po mama Okay, so those without any knowledge of the poker cards, 52 cards to, meron lang silang distinguishing sets. One will be the heart set, the spade set, the diamonds, and the clover set. So because there are only four suits, then 52 divided by four will give us 13 cards for each of the four suits. Okay, so if we have this problem of if you draw three cards from a deck of poker cards, what is the probability of having three aces? So dahil ang tanong is the probability of getting three aces, is a segregate agad-agad natin that there are only four aces. Nandito na yung subset natin. We're taking out from the 52 the four aces kasi this is the intelligent way of looking at a solution. Ang interest ko lang will be aces. So to make sure that the probability that I will get will be the three aces, I segregate now the four aces. And from the four, I get three. That is why this is combination of four taken three times. So pag tinanggal ko yung four aces from the 52 total number of cards. The remaining other set without the attribute of interest will be 48. So ang tanong doon, how many cards do I take from this other set? I need to ensure that I don't get any of that. So that's combination of 48 taken zero. But the denominator will simply be the combination of 52 cards taken three, regardless of whether these are aces or non-aces. So the divisor in here will be the relative basis for when everything is not controlled, then the number of combinations, possible combinations of three cards being drawn from the 52 poker cards will simply be combination 52 taken 3. Don't worry about the computational um, requirement for this because you can either use Excel or the scientific calculator okay, for the computation of this. And then we will come up with a probability that's between 0 and 1. Anytime you compute a probability and you do not come up with a value between 0 and 1 inclusive, then you know that you messed up with the steps in the computation. So that's an immediate indicator na may namali kayo doon na step. Okay? So then we have now, let's say, an example where we are given this, that there are a number of wild animals messing up rain gauges in a forest weather station. And if we would like to estimate the number of animals, 20 are captured and then tagged and then released. Okay? So... We will estimate the number of wild animals in the forest from a knowledge of how we have captured 100 wild animals and only one of the 100 captured has been tagged. So, any this kind of observation that tells us that the probability of a wild animal messing up with a rain gauge in a forest weather station is 1 over 100 or 1%. Okay? So, ito yung uh, observed or empirical 
probability. And that kind of uh, understanding will be able to tell us on how the weather station can protect itself from protect the rain gauges from uh, wild animals mistaking this as toys or uh, gadget of interest. Kahit na nga sila wild, interesado pa din sila sa uh, latest technology as most men are. Okay? And then, we can have fun with computing probabilities from poker poker card um, problem solving activities okay i will show you and guide you on this just to have some exercise prior to the laboratory exercise for this okay and one very very appropriate example of how to compute a hypergeometric probability would be to compute for winning the lotto okay i'm not too clear on the types of lotto games there are because there is 46 there is 45 there is 47 Still, the lot of versions will always ask you to identify six numbers. And when we do this, we can always calculate the probability of winning. So for this example, we are given that there are 45 balls numbered 1 to 45, and you get to view or watch um, PCSO in the TV program where they declare the winner and show actually that each of the balls are weighed and it is shown that the weight differences will have to be insignificant because the probability of the ball rising up and coming out of the funnel will have to be equally likely. Okay, so this probability distribution will now be a hypergeometric probability distribution because we separate now the subset of the winning numbers from the non-winning numbers. Okay, so what is the probability that your numbers will be a match to the six winning numbers? And okay, mali yung, and that this one will have uh, four matches of the six winning numbers. This one you hit the jackpot for uh, four numbers that match four of the six winning numbers. I also think you get uh, a sizable amount of winning. No, so that is how we compute for the hypergeometric probability distribution. So dito, in terms of applications of field biology, this will have to do with tagging. Because if your study, let's say, is on species that, uh, animal species that is threatened for extinction, what they do is tag these animals and then because we now have the microchip technology, some of the animals will have embedded on them their uh, microchips. No? Para when you study, when you make a longitudinal study, at a future time, you can always check where these animals are or if they still are alive okay and also if let's say you're talking about migration of animal species then what you do really is tag some of them and then have the link to the satellite and you can actually tag 
these individuals. And if you understand the internet, let's say Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, this, um, this Facebook and all these agencies giving us all of these applications have the artificial intelligence algorithm na natatrack tayong lahat, even the choices. So what you do even with your phone so that you're not being tracked and profiled, no? You, you will have to go to the settings and look at your privacy settings and then switch off even the offline of Facebook, even when you're out of Facebook, they still can track your uh, choices. So switch it off. I mean switch it off because when you apply for a job later on, if your uh, choice of employment has sophisticated HR protocols, even yung mga posts nyo sa Facebook, will be tracked. So if I were you, don't post, you know, this um, unacceptable kinds of behavior sa Facebook because you may be unreasonably profiled. Okay? So try to check that out. So anong ginagawa nito? What it does is you're being tracked by your activities. And in biology, you do this when you would like to track, let's say, What's a, let's say the, ano, the Philippine eagle. The Philippine eagle is threatened for extinction. So if you would like to study that, then you can put a microchip in the captured eagles and then uh, release them in the wild. Okay? Any form of uh, migratory animals can be tracked using just a GPS device, okay? So you might be interested in like, uh, oh, ano nga yun? WWF, World Wildlife um, Foundation, can do these types of studies. And some of you may be into researches which does this, okay? So if you also go for clinical studies, when you go for the medical degree, you might go and venture into these kinds of uh, research which will respect the hypergeometric probability distribution, such as, let's say, if you're studying diabetics and if you're introducing a program whereby you would like to reverse diabetes no, so that they don't go in to renal failure mode na nagdadialysis na. Ito kung yung mga, yung mga doktor natin may konsensya so that they do not over-prescribe medications that anyway will have side effects on the other internal organs of the patient. One synthetic medicine will have uh, collateral damage on the other internal organs of the body and you do not like that. So diabetes, they say, can be reversed and that will have to be um, subjected to a clinical study. Okay? And then we have the last discrete probability distribution which is a posong probability distribution. So, ang tanong, ano ba to? So, this probability distribution is applicable for the demonstration or the observance of rare instances or rare events. Okay? So, an example would be if you would like to develop a, a burn skip anybody subjected to a burning accidentally or or by by a willful act of an evil person or somebody that you are in conflict with no halimbawa sinabuwagan ka kay acido or let's say someone trapped 
in a burning burning uh, structure any burn victim kahit na yung sa tambot subaga ng ng motor let's say if you have a small a baby brother or sister na pagdating pagdating nyo too excited to meet you and is able to touch the uh, hot tambutso then if that tambutso gets in contact with your brothers or sisters um, skin young skin madali yun mag burn so if you would like to develop a paper like wrap para prior to rushing to the hospital it can be wrapped wrapped around the wound no raw wound yun lagyan mo yun ng gauze anything on it that needs to be taken off masyadong masakit yun and that means you will have to subject the patient to high doses of uh, pain killers and for a child to be given that that's not good or a, a very old person that's not good for their wellness so kung may rap ka doon when you look at this as a unit of space kung rare yung bubbles mo doon that can be a Poisson probability distribution. Okay? And suppose you are looking at the um, ecological indicators of insignificant pollution per square kilometer of, say, of a forest. So because these are rare indicators, then you can use this as a posong probability distribution. Merong mga plant species na indicator of the excellent condition of a particular ecosystem. Bilangin mo yun na nando doon, then because you do not expect them to be so common, in fact, they rarely occur, then you will have to observe a Poisson probability distribution. Example, there are forests with a kind of floral bloom. I mean, you, there is this natural fertilizer na parang grass lang, but it was a discovery made by a mountain hiker na nakita niya bakit when he, he was on top of a particular mountain nakikita niya there's a spot in that whole big area where so much of what grows has very vividly green foliage so he went there and approached only to discover that this place has a very distinct kind of uh, grass on the on the forest floor. So that gave him an idea that this is the reason why for this particular area, masyadong matingkad yung mga kulay ng foliage, masyadong green na green. All of the other plants were in existence in the other parts of the forest, but he was not able to see that kind of vividness in the foliage and that is the reason why this guy was able to identify that this is a natural fertilizer call it serendipity call it grace of god he was there for the right uh pioneering pioneering experience of witnessing a natural fertilizer and this is commonly used as organic fertilizer. Hindi to dina dry. It will be planted, and all the rest of your uh, of your plants being grown will have um, additional nutrition from this grass. Okay. When do we use the Poisson probability distribution? Okay. This is useful when we have a series of discrete events 
which are independent of other events. And then, madali unto ma ma-identify na gagamitin mo yung posong probability distribution especially time interval or area okay and the occurrence that it happens this event of interest is not known and it is not random okay and the succeeding event event is not affected by the prior event so there is independence of the events in this distribution okay so what are we to uh, pay attention to when we use the Posong probability distribution. One, the events are independent. The occurrence of one event and other events is not dependent, is not, I mean, affected by the other events. And we are given, and ito yung clue nyo during the exam, na itong average rate is a constant. Okay? And that two events cannot happen at the same time. So, ito, ang average occurrence for the time interval is known as lambda. When you refer to other books, they don't have lambda times t. What is given out in the formula is simply lambda. That's understood that it is confined to a specific slice of time or a specific slice of area, okay? And our E in the equation is the Euler's number, which is an automatic value, approximately equal to 2.71828. This is a non-repeating, non-terminating number, okay? This is pronounced Euler's or Euler's, and you can easily get this from the calculator for the excel computation you need to define this as equal to this value because e is not an automatic value okay so that being said let's look at the Poisson distribution for this kind of problem no so many or some, I should say, not many, because we need to be careful. Some people, they tell you, okay, make a wish, and if it's done during nighttime, and when uh, you get a mature dropping from the sky, ang sinasabi na Manila, that your wish will be granted. Okay? The Chinese has a, has a way of also doing this. What they do, meron ba ditong Chinese sa klase natin? Do we have a Chinese individual in this class? Mi po, ma'am. Meron ba? Okay. Okay. Miss Marie Louise, can you, ano, can you verify yung sinasabi ko? Yung Chinese, meron silang hinahawakan na wood na half moon. And then, you pray. And then, ask for something. Let's say, will I be able to proceed to medicine? And then, you drop those two half moons. Depende yung pag, pag, ano, result nung pag-drop mo nun. The answers will be yes, no, maybe. Okay? Tama ba? In traditional Chinese po, I think yes po. Oh, because po. my Cantonese grandmother because? would do that po. Upon my, my um, uncle's uh, entrance to medicine, he, uh, she, we did that. 
somehow like that. Pero wala And pa. what was the... Ano yung result nun? Did it approximate the, ano, the true result? Yung actual na nangyari? I think so, yes po. Okay, that's how how they do this. Because yung Chinese naman na traditions, this, go, do, this goes back to 100 centuries of uh, observations. Although hindi naman nila ginajot down. But the practice is passed on. And because of their close clan uh, relations, the passing on of the tradition is somehow orally documented. Gaya ng mga Hujo, the Jews, they also pass on their tradition orally. That's why they practice the oral tradition of passing on even the biblical the biblical books. These are just orally passed on. Yung Filipinos, we did this uh, before. Siguro kayong mga younger generations, you don't get to experience this. But when we were young, we always had uh, night times of storytelling among all cousins with the parents relating the, the traditions okay, of Filipinos and of the family in particular. Okay, That's why I still can remember my, my mother telling me, not telling all of us, do not let the younger generation forget those who have passed on. And we need to tell them stories about the characters of these individuals, of my brothers and sisters, my aunts, uncles, and you know, great-grandparents, so that even when they did not meet them, you get to have a taste of who they are and how they behaved in life. So ito, because of the passing on, kasi kung titingnan nyo lang, two half moons, two wooden half moons, and that's how they do this. It's like tossing of a coin. But the toss of a coin is like, you know, an irreligious way of doing it. You just toss it. But here, I have seen the Chinese. They pray. And they actually, I don't know if they pray to their ancestors or to God. And uh, do the, they just drop it. They just, they don't toss it. It's with reverence that they drop it. So it's a good way of validating that this is a custom that really is um, understood to be a guide to how they, uh, to how they deal with life's op options. So for us, we don't have this tangible way of getting answers, no? But there are those also of us, those who pray to, let's say, St. Therese of the Child Jesus, if you're a Catholic, and when you pray to her and you ask for an answer, an answer of yes means somebody just out of an hour will give you a rose. Okay? You understand what a rose signifies. Okay? For the Catholics, the rose is uh, is an image of yung sa synthetic ano synthetic happiness. Okay, I've been to to where Saint Francis of Assisi was, and you get to see the rose without the thorns. That's the rose where he rolled onto when he was being tempted. And the thorns of that rose did not prick his skin. And now there is that rose. It's maintained by the nuns. And they truly do not have thorns. Okay, Anyone who has seen a rose without thorns, that's the species where St. Francis of Assisi rolled on to when he was being tempted. So you will have to more or less get to have a tangible illustration of what you just uh, listened to and watched relative to the ability of the human mind to synthesize happiness. Diba yung synthesizer sa audio ng mga uh, speakers? When you synthesize, you get waves that are in agreement. No? 
waves whose melody are blending is um, pleasant to the ears. And that is also how we synthesize life. And for that, we can even illustrate that that this can also be a mode of um, illustrate, illustrating the Poisson probability distribution. So as previously said, merong mga those who wish on a dark night and then they try to, to ask the heavens to give them the answer, answer. And if a meteor drops from the sky, from any which way you look up in the sky, then that tells us that that is a wish granted, okay? So this one is a true example. This was a daughter and a father, you know, um, watching the heavens, the sky for the for the stars and the meteors, okay? Because the daughter was so enamored or in love with the heavenly constellations. And they kept counting the meteors that dropped from the sky. And what, what, the, what this two remembered, okay? And I have the source down there that the average number of meteors dropping from the sky is five per hour, okay? So if it's by minute, okay? So we have one meteor coming down or dropping from the skies every 12 minutes, okay? So this now will form the lambda in the in the formula for the Poisson probability distribution. Now, if you fix that to a particular time slice, Sean, and make it lambda times t, okay? And now, we look at the graphs of varying lambda for the mature example. And then you get to see that the shape of the curve somehow will be the same except that the tailing and the shifting also happens, no? So it's a good way of looking at manifestations of natural phenomena, okay? Now in here, we have five meters per hour observed at different time intervals. And again, the shape will be similar. For in here, the shape digresses for this orange, um, for this orange graph, which will be meters per hour, okay, at, at 12 meters per hour, okay? So, ito yung, yung, um, break away from the common shape. But for this, when we look at the five fixed five meters per hour, which was the average, the average occurrence per hour, and observed at different time intervals, we get to have the same shape of the graph. Okay. So this is where we end the discussion on on discrete probability distributions. Okay. Questions? Do you have questions? Questions, Bob? 